here, it's Jackie Ballheis from Clump and Stampers. Are you ready to watch me make some fun all occasion cards? You know, what we're gonna talk about today is if you follow Stampin' Up! and you buy a lot of Stampin' Up! products, quite often you buy a beautiful stamp set and it has very limited greetings in it, I guess is the best way to explain it. The best example is the stamp set Healing Hugs and we're gonna use that one today great images love the flower in it however the greetings that are in that stamp set are get well and that's fine and dandy but we don't use get well all the time but i want to show you how you can still use those gorgeous images for cards for all occasions and i have a lot of little tips to share along the way we're going to do some heat embossing today i don't always do that um, during the video so every once in a while we're going to throw it in i mean i use it a lot of my cards but i don't show you how to do it so we're going to throw that in today along with a paper saving tip that i promised you in my last video and I forgot to share it. So we're gonna share that today. Hopefully I won't forget. And yeah, I think that's about it. Lots of tips. I always, if you're new to following me, as you go through my videos, make sure you always watch to the very end because I share lots of just general stamping tips to make card making quick and easy. So even if you don't like the images or what I'm making, you never know what you're gonna learn each time or maybe just some subtle reminders on how you can make things easy. Speaking of, if you haven't watched me before, welcome i'm glad you're here right down there below i guess in the description of the video or wherever you find it um there's a link to the blog post i always do that because i always have a post over on my blog shows the products i use today pictures of the cards as well as the card recipe so if you want to make it you know exactly how to cut your card stock and don't forget to subscribe i try to bring at least two videos sometimes three a week showing you quick and easy card making so enough chit chat let's flip this camera down and let's get stamping so here is the stamp set I referred to and the one we're going to use today. It's called Healing Hugs. It, it's been around for a while. I bet a lot of you guys have it because the images are gorgeous. But again, I bought this one. I made some get well cards. And sometimes we tend to say, oh, it's a get well set. We set it on our shelf. We don't pull it out until we need a get well card. Well, what we're going to do today is still use these beautiful images. And we're going to use the Happy Thoughts stamp set. If you follow me, you know I'm probably stamping this one to death right now. But one of the purposes in the way I designed the stamp set, so yep, I got to design this one, was that this paired perfectly with other stamp sets. And this is the greatest example because we've got great images, but now if we use the stamp set with it, we can make congratulations, thank you, thinking of you, happy birthday, any kind of card you need. So I don't have to just put this away and wait till I need a get well card. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's kind of get started. This card, I like to, I guess, describe it as we're gonna have lots of parts and pieces that we're gonna do. And then at the end, we're gonna put the card all together and we'll have this beautiful card. Now, there are no dies for this one, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of fussy cutting. So I'm starting out with a piece of basic white and we are going to stamp our images that we have to fussy cut. So we have Melon Mambo and Garden Green. And with Garden Green, we're gonna stamp three of our little sets of leaves here. And these are our images that we need to fussy cut. Now, we're gonna do a little bit magic of TV here, but I wanna give you just a couple of fussy cutting tips. Um, some people I've heard say they hate to fussy cut or they struggle with it. A couple of tips. I love the Stampin' Up! Snips, okay, this little scissors for fussy cutting because, number one, it fits my hand really good, but the short little pointed tips, so any small scissors, works better for fussy cutting. And the key kind of is the hand that I'm holding my scissors doesn't move a lot, and I use my left hand to move my piece of paper, in this case the rose, around as I'm cutting. And that's how you can easily just kind of keep working your way around it. I always like to leave a little bit of white space rather than cutting right on the edge because that kind of, it, that way you get like the whole image, I guess would be the best way to say that. If you try to cut all the white off, you sometimes cut into the image a little bit. So that little bit of white, I think just makes it look a little bit better. So in this case, I would cut out all of those images, but we're gonna play the Magic of TV game. And there's our two roses and one, two, three of our leaves. So we're gonna just set them aside a little bit. As I said, we got lots of parts and pieces. So next, we're gonna go ahead and take a piece of basic black 
in this card, we are going to make it a thank you card using the thank you from Happy Thoughts. So heat embossing, let's talk about that for just a little bit if this is something new to you. When you heat emboss, you obviously need embossing powder. I like to use, and I do this a lot, um, I like to emboss white powder on black cardstock. I really like that look. I think the greeting pops, I love the pop of black. Um, so when you do that, your color is coming from your embossing powder. So what you'll want is a clear pad, or the, in this case, we use Versamark. It's basically a clear, sticky ink because I need this white powder to stick to it. Now, I, I get asked quite often, can I emboss using white ink and clear powder? You can, but honestly, it you don't get the, the really dark, crisp white. So I definitely prefer white powder um, to really get that true white. Now, we're gonna go ahead and, oh, before we do that, now, little disclaimer, Stampin' Up! doesn't sell these anymore. It's called an embossing buddy. Not sure if you can find these or something else similar out on the market, but what this does is it takes the static off your cardstock, and you just kind of rub it on there, so that little specks of powder don't stick where you don't want them to. If you've heat embossed before, you'll notice sometimes your image gets your white powder and then you get specks of it all over where you don't want it. This is what helps prevent this. Now, here's a hack. If you don't have this or can't get one, a dryer sheet works really well. Also, take a dryer sheet and rub this. You know, it's just kind of getting the static and the oils and stuff off your cardstock so that powder doesn't stick to it. Now, we can go ahead and we're gonna stamp our thank you. And then I like to put my powder in a little container and have a spoon because now I can scoop it up there and then shake it off and it just all falls right back in there. If you don't get enough, scoop a little bit more. Now, when I look at it, I can see right here, kind of get that off there, a little bit that wasn't supposed to be there. Now, next step, now you do kind of have to do that part rapidly, stamp powder on so it sticks. Now, you don't have to get to the heat embossing part quite as quick. So if you were gonna do a bunch of these, you could stamp and put the powder on a bunch, then heat them all. So we're gonna use our Stampin' Up! heat tool, and I apologize, this might get a little loud. I'll try to keep talking really close to the microphone here. Let your heat tool warm up a little bit, and then we're gonna just start moving it around. And you will see here, eventually, once it starts heating up, that powder will turn a shiny white. You definitely see the difference. There we go, I'm gonna stop for a second. Can you see the difference here where it's shiny and it's still powdery? Just keep moving your heat around until everything is shiny and it is done. So let's turn that off. Um, you don't wanna overheat it. You can actually do that. If you keep holding that heat source in one spot, that powder eventually kind of flattens back out. So don't overcook it. Now we're going to go ahead and use the tailored tag punch. And you know what I did? I stamped that up too high so I can't punch it out. So we're gonna grab our little trimmer here. We are going to cut off some of the bottom of that cardstock so that punch can go in further. And that also means I'm not going to show you my paper punch trick again. I'm Actually, I will, I'm gonna cheat and show it to you a little bit different, so hang on a sec. <laughs> okay, we've punched that out. Now, what? let's just kind of backtrack and I'm gonna show you my paper punching trick first. This kind of makes me chuckle. I hope you realize I make mistakes all the time as well. And I don't edit my videos a lot. I like to let you see my boo-boos just so that you know, hey, I'm just a, an ordinary stamper just like you are. So the paper saving trick that I really wanted to share with you, the piece of black I originally stamped on and I had to like cut a little bit of it off. This is actually a layer that's going to be on my card. It's going to be layered just like this for the card, which you'll see here in a minute. And so when this gets layered on the card, all of this black is, is kind of wasted, I guess. So my intent was to stamp my thank you on there. And let's just make believe I had stamped it lower than I did. And then I could punch it out from this layer. So we're gonna make believe here. And okay, so let's make believe that's where we punched it out because now I can still layer this onto my card and I really didn't have to use an extra piece of black to do it. 
So there finally is your paper saving trick and not quite as elegant way as I wanted to share with you, but it's a good tip, I think. So <laughs> let's go back here to our basic white layer that will be the front of our card. And I am going to go ahead and take crumb cake and one of the images from our stamp set to just create a little bit of a background here on our card. So we're gonna kind of randomly, this is going to get covered up from those flowers that I cut out, but I just wanted a little bit of this, we'll just call it greenery, I guess, showing as a background on that white. So I've stamped that, it kind of looks ugly on its own, but when we get the whole card together, you'll see why I did that. So next, let's go ahead and, and take our layer. And now when you put adhesive on here, I'm gonna kind of go out around the edges because if I put it in the middle, it's gonna goosh through that hole. Goosh, is that a word? Does anyone else use that? Um, we'll see if we gooshed at all. Nope, we did pretty good. So we've added that onto the layer and then I am going to use a piece of the polka dotted twelve. Twelve, I guess that's how you pronounce this. My roll's almost gone there. Right, let's see, where's our scissors? Now, this is a little change for me if you follow me. I use a ton of baker's twine and linen thread, typically on my cards, because I'm not very good at tying bows. Well, this is kind of an exception. This polka dot toile, to me, gives you a little bit more elegant look, and it is really easy to tie. Notice I usually do things upside down. I, it makes your bow tails come down that way. But it is pretty easy to tie and it's also not bulky. So if you're going to put this in an envelope and mail it, you don't have to worry so much about, you know, the big bulk or having to pay extra postage. So I like to use that once in a while, especially when, you know, we're kind of going more for that elegant look. Okay, we got our parts and pieces here. So we will start with one of the flowers. Now notice I'm putting my, I'm using three dimensionals, but I do have them pretty much in the center because once I stick this down and I stick my other flower down, I'm gonna kind of tuck the leaves underneath there. And if those dimensionals were right out here along the edge, it'd be harder to tuck the leaves underneath. So that's why I kind of centered those more, you know, in the middle of that. Now my second rose, we're gonna put down here and it's gonna overlap a little bit. So again, I don't want any dimensionals up where it's going to overlap. So these, we're going to kind of come down a little bit lower, but still, you know, room to tuck some leaves in there. I hope that makes sense. I feel like it's kind of a hard thing to describe. So there are those. And now with our leaves, we can go ahead and and we'll tuck one there. See, that's how, see how that slid under there? If there was a dimensional right there, that wouldn't have worked like it did. And then here, we're gonna, let's see, let's kind of tuck that in there. We've got three of them, so we're just gonna stick them all over here. Let's put this one right there. But see how that crumb cake, the little sprays, I just add a little bit to that background. So there is kind of the main focal point. Now all we need to do is add our greeting. Now this could be happy birthday, congratulations, thinking of you. And I'm gonna, let's see, we're gonna put it about right there. Now again, I don't want dimensionals way over on this right part. So we're gonna put them over on the left. And the, and the reason is, because as we're layering and popping these things up, this left side is going to go on top of that flower. So we don't want it kind of crooked, I guess, would be the best way to put it. And let's see, can we stick that in a little bit further? And we'll put it right there. So there is that piece of it. Now, I wanna show you a little tip or technique called masking. So this is gonna be the inside of our card. And let's go ahead and put our words on it first. So I have, so it's a thank you card. So I grabbed one of the inside verses, as I like to call them, from our Happy Thoughts stamp set. That is probably one of the biggest reasons I love the stamp set because it has the coordinating words for inside and outside of your card and they're nice and big. You know, we don't always get big greetings to put on the inside. So next, our little tip on masking. Because I always say you want to stamp the inside of your cards and make them pretty as well. So we're gonna take our same rose here. We're gonna stamp it down in the corner. 
And just to kind of show you what I'm trying to do, we'll stamp on scrap paper as well. Well, I don't really want to cut leaves out, but if I was to take these leaves, I could either try to put them way out like that, and I kind of risk maybe it doesn't work so good, or I end up with them on top of the rows. Well, we don't want that either. So a little tip is called masking. And all you need to do is stamp your image on a post-it note, which I've done here, and you can reuse these over and over. And then cut it out. In this case, I knew I only kind of needed, hopefully I did this the same way, yep, the top part. So I didn't cut the whole thing out. Now, the exception here, when you cut this, you do want to cut a little tiny bit of that image off. Don't, you, don't leave the white space like we talked about over here so that when you cover it up and you lay it down there, I still wanna see just a teeny tiny bit of that pink underneath because that will help you get what I like to call a little bit of ghost shadowing. If, if it's right up covering that, sometimes you'll get a little white line around there, which is what we, we kinda wanna avoid. So again, we're gonna lay it right there. I see a teeny tiny bit of that pink rose sticking out and I stamp a flower. And I pop it up. Now it looks like these leaves are coming from behind the flower without cutting anything off. So we are almost done with our card. We'll go ahead, let's put some adhesive on here. And as soon as I finish this one, I have three others to show you that I did ahead of time. So we're gonna just layer on a piece of crumb cake. Let's get that stuck on there. Isn't that pretty? I love, like I said, I love the pop of black. I love using crumb cake. Um, it still makes it a very elegant looking card. And then we'll go ahead and put some adhesive on this one. Now, as a reminder, I will have all the measurements for these cards, this one and the other ones that I'm gonna show you over on my blog post. Link is right down there in the video description. And we'll stick that on like so. And let me grab the other ones. I'll also have a list of all the colors I use and all the supplies. So if you'd like to order any of these products I'm using, it's real easy for you to do it right over there on my blog. So let's get the dimensional backings out of the way and I'll show you the other ones. So what I did, these are all basically the exact same card. I use different colors for my, my roses because you know we can make those any color. Oh, it looks like I stamped a little green on the background on these as well. Um, but I use all the different greetings. So now we have happy birthday, thank you, congratulations, thank you. And it's just really to show you how when you take a stamp set that we just kind of wrap our heads around the fact that this is for get well, I'm not gonna use it. Well, combine it with happy thoughts and now you can make cards for anybody and for any occasion. So I hope you like this video. Lots of tips, we embossed, we did masking, um, we did fussy cutting, we did all kinds of stuff here. So if you have any questions, make sure to reach out to me. I'm here to help you with all your quick and easy stamping needs, answer your questions. And again, if you are new to following me or new to Stampin' Up and you'd like a Stampin' Up catalog, again, hop over to my website or my blog, kind of the same thing, I use it interchangeably, and you can request a catalog over there and you can get a hold of me if I can help you in any way. So until I stamp with you again, have a stamp happy day.